example problems is like how she teaches this. She doesn't teach like the whole concept and then you have to figure out the problems. Like, she actually teaches like the like, 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 that she doesn't teach. Yeah, like she like so like, 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 like,
the, the composition of the inner club committee. Um, but just be aware that uh, it's going to be some of you here tonight. Um, and really the purpose of this stuff, like I said, is we want to be more organized on campus. Um, it's a little disjointed, um, it's a little kind of hectic, uh, I would say about different events that are occurring on campus. Uh, sometimes we don't know about what's going on, say, uh, next Tuesday, and then there might be another event that's happening on that same Tuesday that we didn't know about. Um, it's just a way that we can overlay events correctly so that we see more student involvement across events. It's harder to get more students to come to both events because um, they're happening at the same time on the same day. So it's just something that we'd like to see. Uh, you know, we don't want to see that problem. We want to see uh, more students being involved. Uh, so we can continue though, and really the membership though, like I said, is it's going to be a composition of the student leadership around campus. The student leaders are the most important part of the university. Uh, we pretty much, we, we're, we're important in the aspect that we make sure that students find their place on campus, and that causes increased student retention. So in that regard, uh, and admissions and administrators uh, absolutely love us because we increase their retention rate. Uh, of course, the, you must, the, there's just a few criteria to become a member. And one is to have a registered club or organization on campus. Uh, once again, you all know how to do that if you are here today. Uh, really simple, so that's the first step. And you must be also an executive board member or a verified member. And I'll explain what that is um, right now, actually. Um, a verified member or a verified representative for the Interclub Committee is just an individual who um, is not an executive board member, but is approved by the executive board to represent their group or, or their club or organization within the Interclub Committee. Um, so it, it could be any member. If, say, the, anyone on the executive board cannot um, fulfill those requirements, they're busy, they're, we understand that, they could appoint a member that might have the time to do that um, so that we could still get that involvement with the Interclub Committee. Um, a few requirements, though, uh, that we like to um, kind of say. When you're part of the Interclub Committee, uh, you have to fulfill these requirements. Um, and some of them you might already do already, so it's nothing more added to you. Um, but these are some things. Is provide an updated list on personnel information. Uh, we want to know who's in your club and uh, what they're doing, what year, their position, where they're headed. Uh, things like that. It helps us with the bookkeeping so that we know who to contact in future years because uh, like after I'm gone or after you guys are gone and you're a senior graduating in your club, uh, it's a good way for everyone to stay on the same page on what is going on. Two is you must attend the, or, or remain updated because uh, sometimes you, something might come up. You just have to remain updated, uh, but we'd like for you to always attend. It's highly recommended that you attend the regularly scheduled meetings. Um, and how those meetings are scheduled will be uh, clear once we have a, uh, once you receive an email about um, getting that arranged, uh, which is why you've been filling out your emails on the sign-in sheet at the door. But if you haven't, uh, please make sure you do do that. Uh, and really, though, if you can't fulfill these two simple requirements, um, you will you will you will receive reduced funding for the uh, academic year as well as you'll be disbarred from the ICC, and which includes different benefits. Being a part of the ICC, you get benefits with SGA, um, and the Activities Board, uh, which are outlined in our Constitution, which will be available to you uh, in our ICC box account uh, once I get you all added to that. Uh, these changes, of course, um, will be going into effect by the spring semester, so we would like to get this going as fast as possible so that we're all on the same page and everyone is uh, working together. Um, now, we talked about kind of the, log the logistics of the Interclub Committee, and let's kind of go on what, what do we want to see as an end result here. And really what we want out of this is we want to encourage more student involvement on campus so that we see um, greater development of students uh, within our community. And that, of course, will ripple into our surrounding communities, this being a commuter campus. The uh, college experience here is slightly different than what you would find at, a, say, a larger university such as Bloomington, where you have dorms uh, and student residence. Uh, here, it's slightly different. Of course, you're driving to school every day. We want to make sure that the students that are just driving here, going to class, and then going home, that they still somehow get that college experience 
because it's very important for their development as a person when they go on after uh, college into the real world. Um, and of course, this is, a, this is something that's kind of backed by a study that was done by the University of Albany that showed that campus involvement is crucial for psychosocial development throughout the college experience. And that pays dividends when we see that uh, in the later stages of life. Of course, uh, once you're done with college, you go into the real world and you have to be able to interact and be socially uh, competent uh, and uh, be able to interact with others. So we want to make sure that our students are getting that type of effect here at this campus. Uh, now, so that, that's kind of it about the Interclub Committee. Um, and it, it is a lot of information to kind of take in. And it'll be clear once you have that constitution available to you. Um, you could read through it. And of course, we would, of course, at our first official meeting of the Interclub Committee, we will uh, either make adjustments to that constitution and, or we will um, make any uh, changes and vote and approve that constitution so that it is in full effect. Uh, so moving on, the club registration though is uh, it's just something that you have to do if you're a club or organization on campus. You all know this. Um, it's just something you have to do. It's kind of a pain the way it's set up, but you have to. When you register your club though, use your IU email. And I say this because I see like sbcglobal.net, and I don't I don't know what that is. I, I don't know. I don't know what that is. Um, what's a Gmail? What's Imail? Imail and Umail doesn't exist anymore, guys. I don't, know. I don't really know what that is either. But it should be either at IU or at IUN, or even if, if you have an IUPUI or IUB. And anything. It has to be IU affiliated email. Uh, that's just so we know that it's actually you we're talking to. Um, same thing with how your professors, I'm sure, tell you if you're going to email us, use your IU email. Um, everyone, that here, everyone here should have an IU email. And I don't think. Anyone here had that issue with having like a Gmail or SBC Global? But uh, that's just something that's pretty basic that I wanted to clarify. Um, registering your club is important uh, because it facilitates just that exchange of information that we have between each other and with the uh, Office of Student Activities. Um, but I'm sure everyone here understands that because you're here today. So we can move on. Okay, so petitioning, this is a big change coming. Uh, it's still the simple way of petitioning, just with some added, uh, I guess, spice, uh, we'll say, so that we understand that. <laughs> so that we can understand uh, why, you're, why you're having this event, and students are actually excited about your event, because the main thing, of course, the whole thing in this presentation is we want students to be involved with your organizations, we want to see more students join your organization, and we want to see more students participate in your event. So with that, petitioning is it's an important part of SGA. Uh, a lot of you do it, a lot of you come in, and it's a lot of fun. You guys come in and you uh, talk to us about your event, and then we vote, and either we will approve, disapprove, or uh, modify your funds how we see uh, necessary, how we see fit, based on uh, the criteria that you uh, presented to us. Uh, and of course, petitioning forms are on our uh, SGA website um, at the IUN, IUN page. You go to IUN and then you search uh, Student Government Association. Uh, you'll come to our webpage on the IUN website and you will see uh, the petition form. I think it's at the bottom. Uh, I think it's at the bottom. So we can move on. Uh, so we made a new legislation. Petitioning kind of changes and it's still the same. Uh, you're still going to fill out basic information and we eliminate some redundancies. Uh, to make it a little bit more clear. But the main purpose is that we want to um, establish a proper protocol, because as it is right now, is um, we don't have a long-term plan um, established, so we, it's hard for us to keep track of who who's gonna come in, because we wanna kinda guess or predict when a club is gonna have an event throughout the year so we can uh, plan accordingly for that. Um, so it's an important process, and it, it kind of just makes us look better as a university. Um, it kind of gives us some more integrity that we have a process in place that clubs go through in order to get funds. Um, this isn't some type of barrier that we're not trying to make you stop getting funds, no. This is just so that we are more organized and so that we are um, prepared for uh, the future. Uh, but there are some guidelines that come with this uh, 
to form. And really the big thing is, there's two big things, um, is we want at the top here, with the initial form that you fill out, like, like usual, how you usually come in the petition, uh, and then you'll submit it to us, and then we read it, and then you come in, petition, we vote. Um, that stays the same. But what we want to see is signatures from students um, so that we know that they are excited about your event, like an actual petition. Um, people sign it and they're like, yeah, this seems like something that's cool. Students around the campus like our event. That shows us that, okay, this is something we need to fund. Um, and of course with that though, um, you guys are students too. So you can sign that petition as well. And of course, we're, when, we, when we evaluate your petition form, uh, we're gonna take things like this with heavy weight because what we what we do is we uh, advocate for students. So if students don't like your event at all, you have no signatures, why why should SGA fund your event at all if students aren't excited about your event? Um, I think that is a pretty self-explanatory question. Um, but of course then your funds will be determined by a two-thirds vote by student government, um, like always, two-thirds majority uh, for approval or uh, any changes that need to occur or disapprove. Um, of course, we also want to see on your petition form the president or president and vice president, president or vice president uh, to sign the petition off because uh, that's just a way for you, uh, you guys to verify that not someone in your club is just filling out a petition form and then uh, coming to us and petitioning for funds with, uh, behind their back or something like that. Uh, we just want to make sure that you are verifying that this event's actually happening and uh, that's pretty much it. So for the, uh, also another big change, this is the final big change, this is the second part. Um, we want to see that proper petition form submitted one month prior to your scheduled event time. Um, this purpose, the purpose of this is so that we can carefully plan and predict when clubs hold specific events. Um, like we know, we know when Asia Day is going to happen. And we know when that's going to happen because it happens every year and it's a big event. Um, but some other events that are new, they might be new, they might be upcoming. We don't know when those are going to happen. Getting this one month in advance gives us time to prepare, and also for uh, subsequent years after uh, everyone here is gone, they are they are prepared and ready to plan that event, get ready for that event, and it also keeps it lets student activities. Um, kind of be organized as well in regards of, uh, say, uh, someone's having an event and then student activities is planning an event with that or on the, during the same week, there's an overlap. They know, because student activities, they're really well planning their events months in, months in advance and uh, being prepared and ready to go. So this allows us to avoid any uh, schedule conflicts uh, and overall makes, I think, our efficiency at the university and student groups uh, much better. Um, there is a few consequences though. Um, if your petition is submitted late, basically uh, within that one month uh, deadline time frame, after the first day it's a 50% reduction from your funds, and every subsequent day it's a 3.33% reduction uh, after that. Um, I think this is fair. Uh, just hit the deadline, guys. It's not. It's nothing difficult. Um, so I don't know. That's up for debate, though. Of course, if you would like. If you, if you don't think that's fair and have concerns, please come talk to me uh, and give me uh, give me your opinion. Um, and also, we want to see some signatures on there. And of course, the signatures vary on the type of event you have. Obviously, a large event like Asia Day, we'd like to see a lot more signatures than a small just club get together. Sometimes you guys have private events. If, for a private event, you probably just need the signatures of your uh, club members, and that's fine. Um, so things like th things like that to keep in mind, like, uh, and, and we look at that when we evaluate your petition. Um, and of course, we'd like for your president and vice president to acknowledge these guidelines. Um, and of course, the petition document uh, will be available to you on the ICC Box account as well as the ICC Constitution. So you will have those available to you to read through, and you will be able to understand uh, where we are coming from. So with that. I'm gonna hand it off to Greg. Uh, thank you all for uh, listening to me today, and uh, hopefully, there's a lot of more work that we can do to make our university better. If anyone doesn't know, my name is Greg Lambert. I'm a
senior student here at IUN. I represent the International Affairs Club Student Alumni Association Student Activities Board, ALMA, and Brother to Brother. Uh, tonight I bring to you a simple request, actually. It's a proposal. It's for our one community admission, and I've seen this organization happening for the last two years, and a bunch of changes have been brought to our club. And this is a change that could be positive, not only for your club and the safety of its members, but for the safety of our community and campus. As you know, um, we did a climate survey back in 2016 at IUN. Uh, there, are some, there are some good things that are found in this climate survey. Uh, most instances of sexual misconduct actually happen outside of campus, and only 29% are reported and committed by another university student. But yet, 2% of undergraduate women participates, 6% of graduate women participants are reported experiencing attempted or completed non-consensual sexual penetration while at IUN. The good news to this, though, is this actually tracks lower than national averages, according to Fisher et al. 2000 and her study. While these are low percentages, there's another startling statistic. We are not aware about sexual violence prevention and violence prevention at all here on campus. The only time that our students receive education is at student orientation. So what can we do? The issue is, what can we do to make our campus and community safer? There are several steps we can do. We can raise awareness. We can intervene, we can fix or situate the issue, and also too, we can manipulate our environment. This all translates to an acronym called BRISE. My proposal does everything here and raise awareness, intervene, situate, and change our environment. My proposal is to amend your constitutions to include IUN's sexual violence policies found in course syllabi, as well as the amended violence amendment. Your efforts can make a difference to raise awareness and reduce violence here on campus. I would like you all to go back to your groups and your organizations and put in a petition to amend your constitutions with the IUN oh, oops. There we go. With the IUN harassment policy that's found right here. You've seen this before. This is in your syllabus. This is in all four syllabi found throughout IU. You can find it in Bloomington, you can find it in Indianapolis, you can find it all the way in Kokomo. You'll see this at the end of it. And then also, too, you'll see a link for this. I encourage you all to visit stopsexualviolence.iu.edu. This will not only give you a link to the climate survey from the 2016 results, but also, too, it will give you education about terms and how to intervene, how to situate, and also, too, how to uh, just to be aware of these issues. And then also to the next amendment right here. This is an add-on right here. This is our violence policy right here. The organizations will not tolerate or condone any type of violence and strictly prohibits any acts or behavior in any form. This includes any actions from sexual harassment, sexual abuse, sexual assault, verbal harassment, emotional violence, psychological violence, physical violence, domestic violence, dating violence, stalking. Furthermore, the organization acknowledges the IU sexual misconduct policy found at the link. I just want to make you all aware that in our code manual right there for student conduct, we all have to abide by this IU policy right here. This is not overriding that policy. This is just simply to raise awareness and also to, to educate your members about not only the existence of survivors on campus, but also to, to deter potential perpetuators of violence. The simple resolution for tonight is I'd like you to go back to your clubs and organizations and amend the sample, and also to report the results to leadership and SGA. These two simple steps are what inter interclub committee is all about. It's about making our campus better. It's about making our campus more connected. And also, too, in those results, it makes our campus better. All right. That's my end of my presentation, folks. It was short and simple. <laughs>
Um, and we believe it's very important to increase student involvement at your event. So um, once you download the app, you're going to be, if you are at IUN right now and you download it right now, um, you're going to be given a list of campuses around the area. So you can go ahead and click on IU Northwest. And then it will, it will prompt you to sign in. So you're going to sign in with your central authentication service. Basically what you use to log into Canvas, and then you're going to go ahead and do the Duo mobile. Um, you only need to do that once, and then it should go through. Um, once you sign in, you will be given um, a better list of all the organizations, all the registered organizations on Canvas. So you can go ahead and look at upcoming events that are happening, um, and that's going to show everything that is posted on the Red Hot link. So it is very important as a registered uh, club to post all of your flyers and events on the Red Hawk link because it's automatically going to be uploaded here and students can easily just go through the app and find out all the, all the events that your club is, um, is having. So you can go and look through all of the clubs A through Z and then um, you can go ahead and join whichever one you want as well. So if you would like to join a club, you can filter that by um, what type of club it is here. You can also filter events. So if you want to see an event that's happening today or tomorrow or within this week, you can easily do that just by um, some different filtration. And you can also go by if you want free food there or free stuff. So it's really nice for um, you as a club to increase student involvement because um, students can go ahead and pick what they want to see. And if your event pops up, then So as an example, if you go to the different organizations and you go ahead and click on student government, you'll be prompted to our Red Hawk link page, but again, this is all on mobile devices. So it's gonna have our logo, the members, our name, and then a short description, as well as any contact info for um, most likely the president of that organization. Um, if you are a public organization, such as you don't have any interviews or um, recruitment processes, then you can Go ahead, and any student can join that organization. Uh, organization, uh, you might be given an error, but that's mainly because the president or the primary contact of that organization just has to approve you as a member. So again, this is just the Red Hawk link put into one um, local app. So student government believes that this is very important to have on your devices and. You as a club should all download it and then upload all your flyers through the Red Hawk link because it will, again, it will show up on the app. And students will be able to come to the app and see the events happening. They'll be able to see the time, the day, and where it's happening. So if you have an event in Moraine, they'll be easily able to see that. Now if you have an event, let's say in Hawthorne in a small room, normally students might not come to that because it's not in the high traffic area. But now because you have it on the app and students will be able to see it, it will be much easier for you to increase student involvement at that event. So now I'm gonna go ahead and give the floor back to Joe so he can talk about our community center. Hi guys, I'm Beth. Uh, really quick here. Uh, we're gonna talk about the community center. Uh, something that's new, uh, again, like I said, by the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Multicultural Affairs, uh, they want to bring a community center to the campus, something that we don't really have, uh, and it will be in Hawthorne Hall 200. It's a decent space. I've, I've been in there. So some others may have been in there as well. Um, but it, it, it's a decent-sized room, and it's a place where I'd like um, for clubs to be able to use that space um, to find information about SGA, find information about uh, different activities that are going on around campus. Uh, as well as use it as a place where they can meet if they don't have a regular meeting space. I know some clubs, not every club is going to have a place where they can meet regularly. So we would like to use this area to help um, those who cannot use, uh, do not have a space that they can meet that meeting and make progress here at our university. So, um, and it's in the development stages right now. Um, we're in the process, I think, of ordering furniture and that is a long process. Let me tell you, I think it's like a six month turnaround time. Um, so it's a, it's a pain, but uh, once that happens, there's going to be, uh, I think, there's going to be foldable uh, tables, chairs, uh, soft cushion uh, seats, uh, stuff like that, where you can move around the room, reorganize it, rearrange it in any way that you can, um, so that you can utilize it.
that's the um, 